This is a story of how a tooth is formed and this is called as odontogenesis that is the development of a tooth. Now this all starts from the primitive oral cavity which is also called as the stomodium of our embryo. Our deciduous teeth or the primary teeth it starts to form between the 6th and the 8th week and the permanent in the 12th week of the intrauterine life. The ectomesenchyme are the cells which migrate from the primitive neural tube and are responsible for the development of most of the facial region. The odontogenic epithelium or the ectoderm, it interacts with the ectomesenchyme cells through the conduction of the signals which results in odontogenic epithelium to proliferate. The proliferation of the odontogenic epithelium occurs due to a shift of the mitotic spindles of the basal cells. Later on, they split into two parts, primary dental lamina and the vestibular lamina. The primary dental lamina give rise to the tooth bird whereas the vestibular lamina, it invaginates and give rise to the vestibule. That is a space present between the tooth and the cheeks. Some signaling proteins such as FGFs like fibroblast growth factor and bone morphogenic protein that is BMPs and ectodisplacin that is EDA. Now, these proteins causes the cells within the dental lamina to start proliferating and invaginate in the position that corresponds to the location of the future teeth. These localized enlarged projections within the dental lamina, they are known as dental placoids. Now, as these placoids, they start to proliferate the tooth undergoes morphogenesis which results in different teeth shapes. This is guided by the interaction between the epithelium and the mesenchymal tissues. And it thus progresses to three distinct stages defined by the morphological features of the dental epithelium which are the birth stage, cap stage and the bell stage. The dental placoids they descend towards the ectomesenchyme to form a bird kind of a thing. That is why this is called as the bird stage. The ectomesenchyme then they cluster around this tooth bird. And the tooth bird and the ectomesenchymal cells they exchange signals. And thus the tooth bird it undergoes morphogenesis. As we can see, the ectomesenchyme condenses right beneath the tooth bird. Now, this gives rise to the two layers of cells. Number one is the polygonal cells in the inner layer and the low columnar cells in the outer layer. The tooth bird is unique as it has differential proliferation of the cells, which means different part of the cells will grow at a different rate. At the center, the proliferation is slower as compared to the periphery where the cell division is faster in rate. Now, due to the differential proliferation rate, the birth stage, which is our first stage of tooth development, now this will go on to the next stage. That is, it will be converted into the second stage of two development, which is our cap stage. Now, we will study about the cap stage. During the cap stage, three types of epithelial cells can be seen forming the enamel organ. Now, what is this enamel organ? So, this is also known as your dental organ, which is a cellular aggregation seen just above the dental papilla. And the dental papilla forms our dentine and the pulp. Now, the cells 
the three epithelial cells are inner enamel epithelium which is made up of low columnar cells and outer enamel epithelium that is made up of cuboidal cells and the stellate reticulum. Now, these stellate reticulum, they are joined to each other by the desmosomes. And the stellate reticulum, they release glycosaminoglycan to the extracellular space. These glycosaminoglycan, now they have a tendency to attract water as we can See here, the glycosaminoglycans are present around. Now, they have a tendency of attracting the water molecules into the extracellular spaces. Now, these are the water molecules around the cells. So, the water in the extracellular spaces, now they compresses the cell into star-shaped stellate reticulum. Now, there are some non-dividing cells in the enamel organ that is present near the inner enamel epithelium. Now, these non-dividing cells, they are also called as enamel knot. And these signaling cells, they can regulate the formation of the cusp in a tooth. The ectomesenchyme, which we can see here around, now, these are the ectomesenchymes which continues to accumulate near the invagination. The dense condensation beneath the cap is known as the dental papilla which forms the dentine and the pulp. The ectomesenchyme that surrounds the cap, it is known as the dental sac or the dental follicle. Now, as the enamel organ grows, the invagination deepens and it forms a cervical loop at the tip. This is the cervical loop. Now, the cervical loop is where the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium, they meet. We can see here the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium. They are meeting. Now, within the enamel organ, a few epithelial cells between the stellate reticulum and the inner enamel epithelium, they differentiate into a layer of spindle-shaped cells known as the stratomentor medium. Next. The stellate reticulum which is there then starts to collapse, thus reducing the distance between the inner enamel epithelium and our outer enamel epithelium. So, the distance is reduced between these two epitheliums. Next is the late bell stage. Now, this is marked by two phases, morphodifferentiation and histodifferentiation. The morphodifferentiation determines the future shape of the crown and the histodifferentiation in this, there is conversion of the cells of the dental organ into the specialized cells such as ameloblastoma that produces enamel and the odontoblast which produces dentine. After the cusp formation, the inner enamel epithelial cells and the dental papilla cells, they continue to differentiate into ameloblasts and odontoblasts respectively, thereby forming enamel and dentine. Now, as the enamel and the dentine are formed, the dental lamina starts to disintegrate. Now, the dental lamina, it starts to shrink leaving behind the nest of epithelial cells which are sometimes known as epithelial pearls. Now, the remnants of the dental lamina can lead to a lot of abnormalities like supernumerary teeth, odontoma and eruption cyst. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe.